In this video, we will learn about the application of recombinant DNA technology in a various application. First, we will look into the roles of recombinant DNA technology in the mass production of insulin using cDNA. Before we discuss more about the application, let's try to understand what and why we need insulin. Insulin is the hormone secreted by the pancreatic cells of the human that can lower the blood glucose level by promoting the uptake of glucose by body cells. For example, liver cells can convert excess of glucose into glycogen. The other cells can convert glucose into protein and fat. Insulin will allow the cell to use glucose. Diabetes is the conditions of the glucose levels builds up in the bloodstream due to the lack of insulin or due to the insulin resistance. There are three types of diabetes, diabetes type 1 and 2, and gestational diabetes during pregnancy. Why insulin is so important? Based on the statistic 2017, more than 425 million adults worldwide affected by diabetes. In Malaysia 2019, 3.9 million people has diabetes. Most of the diabetic persons need to depend on insulin. However, only about half of the population has the access to the insulin. To increase the access to affordable and safe insulin, we need to produce insulin through recombinant DNA. The mass production of insulin is possible through recombinant DNA technology in which we will use the cDNA to synthesize the target gene. The first step is synthesis of cDNA. The mRNA is extracted from human pancreatic cell and will be incubated with enzyme reverse transcriptase to produce single-stranded DNA. The enzyme DNA polymerase will be added to synthesize the complementary strand to form complementary DNA or cDNA. The cDNA made from mRNA lacks of intron and can be used as a target gene. The next step is to incorporate the cDNA into a cloning vector. The cDNA that will become our target genes will be combined or will be incorporated into the plasmid through the methods of gene cloning that will involve isolation, cuts, insertion, transformation, amplification, and screening. The expression of target genes will produce insulin polypeptide that's similar to the human insulin. Now, we will describe the step involved in the production of insulin using cDNA. First, we will isolate the mRNA from the human pancreatic cells, specifically the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans. The mRNA is chosen because the mRNA is the coding sequence legs of introns. The next step is the reverse transcriptase enzyme is added to the mRNA to synthesize the single-stranded DNA. Reverse transcriptase enzyme produces DNA complementary to the mRNA nucleotides. The following step is the mRNA strand will be degraded by using mRNA degrading enzyme. This step will remove the mRNA and we will have single-stranded DNA. The DNA polymerase will synthesize a second DNA strand, complementary to the first single-stranded DNA. When the process is complete, the cDNA gene that called for insulin is ready to serve as a target gene. After we have the target gene, now we will move on to the second step. That is to incorporate cDNA into the cloning vector. For this, we will apply the methods in gene cloning. The first step is isolation. We already have the cDNA as a target gene. 
Now we need to isolate the plasmid from the bacterial cell. The second step is cleave or cut. We will cut both cDNA and plasmid with the same restriction enzyme. This step will ensure both cDNA and plasmid have compatible or complementary sticky ends. The next step is insertion. During this step, the DNA ligase is used to seal the phosphodiester bond of the target genes and plasmid. This will form the recombinant plasmid or recombinant DNA that contain target gene or cDNA. The following step is transformation. The recombinant plasmid now are reintroduced into the host cells known as E. coli. After transformation, the next step is amplification and followed by screening. During this process, the bacteria are allowed to reproduce in a medium culture containing antibiotic ampicillin and lactose. The ampicillin will kill all bacteria without plasmid. Bacteria with plasmid will survive to form white or blue colonies. In blue-white screening, the bacteria with recombinant plasmid will form white colonies, while bacteria without recombinant plasmid will form blue colonies. The bacteria from the white colonies then allow to reproduce and express the target gene during fermentation to form insulin polypeptide. The target gene or cDNA will be expressed during the fermentation and the bacteria will produce insulin polypeptide in rapid production. The polypeptides then isolated and purified to form functional insulin that is set to human. The insulin produced through this process is similar to the human insulin. It has no adverse reaction. It can be produced in large amount. It's cheaper compared to the conventional method and it's halal from the Muslim perspective. Another example of the application of recombinant DNA and DNA technology is CRISPR-Cas9 system. CRISPR, which stands for Clustered Regulatory Interspace Short Palindromic Repeats, is the powerful gene editing tools that can cut, replace, or disable specific gene on the DNA. The edited gene also can be inherited through a population known as gene drive. CRISPR-Cas9 system consists of Cas9 protein or endonucleus and guide RNA that can enter the nucleus to cut specific target gene to be disabled or to be repaired to form normal gene. Technically, CRISPR-Cas9 is highly effective to disable gene to repair mutated gene or even to create new genetically modified organism. For example, CRISPR is used to edit the gene in Anopheles species mosquito to become infertile or become malaria resistant mosquito. CRISPR provides a new hope for human beings to combat malaria disease globally. Another application of recombinant DNA is in agriculture. For example, to produce transgenic soybean that is resistant to herbicide. Soybean is the second largest crop grown in the United States. Another application is in transgenic Atlantic salmon. This Atlantic salmon can grow bigger and faster compared to the natural salmon. In pharmaceutical, besides the mass production of insulin, Recombinant DNA technology also used to produce therapeutic protein such as antithrombin in goat milk. In bioremediation, the genetic engineering able to produce oil-utilizing microorganisms that can grow rapidly on oil. 
This bacteria can break the oil into non-toxic and non-polluting materials. As we can see, the recombinant gene technology has many benefits that we can enjoy and explore. However, the potential benefit of genetic engineering must be carefully weighed against the potential for harms to human or to the environment.